Hello and welcome back to Math 301, Introduction to Combinatorics. Today we're going to be talking about section 3.5, which is about multisets. The multisets, the idea is that you have sets with repeated elements. So the order of elements doesn't matter. They can be rearranged, but repeats are allowed. So you can have the same element in the set again and again. And this type of um, material is also very good for understanding distribution problems. Like if you want to give teddy bears to kids or uh, put pennies in jars, or in this problem that we're going to talk about today, we're going to be ordering sushi. So um, when you order sushi in a restaurant, you have a certain number of dollars. And we're going to let K be the number of dollars. And you have a certain number of options for what kinds of sushi. And today we're going to start with N equals three options, cucumber, yam, and salmon. And the idea is that it doesn't matter if you order cucumber and then yam and then cucumber or cucumber, cucumber, yam, those will be the same, the same outcome. So let's start with the problem. Let's say we had N equals three options and k equals two dollars let's try to figure out how many different sushi orders you could have so you could put um you could order two cucumbers or you could order two yams or you could order two salmons so that's three different options or you could order a cucumber and a yam or you could order a yam and a salmon, or you could order a cucumber and a salmon. And those are all supposed to be on six different rows. So here we have uh, six ways, six ways to spend $2 on three options of sushi. So if we get to a larger number of options, let's say N equals seven options and K equals $2, we wouldn't want to write them all out. So let's try to find instead a, a systematic way of doing this. Notice that we first had the options where we had uh, two of the same type. And there are um, seven ways that that would be possible. Or you could have two different types. In that case, we would be choosing two types out of seven. So it would be seven, choose two, which is seven times six over two, that's 21. So altogether, we would have seven options from the same type and seven options for two different types. So that would give us 28 options. And more generally, you can see that if you have and options, and K being $2, then you're going to have N ways to take uh, two that are the same. And you're going to have N choose two ways of taking two that are different. So if we have only $2, then we've solved this problem. But notice it's a little subtle because we have to think about these different cases of having two the same or having two that are different. Okay, so let's let's move on to um, n equals three options and k equals three dollars. So in this case, uh, we did a problem similar to this in section three point one. In this case, we could first have, well, let me just give some examples. We could have, we could have three that are the same. So we could have three that are the same, and there would be three ways of doing that. We could have three cucumbers, we could have three yams, or we could have three salmon. Or we could have um, one of one type, like cucumber, and two of another type like salmon. 
Okay, that's a little bit trickier. So we would have two of type one and one of a different type. So there we would have three options for which one we're gonna have double of, and then two options for which one we're gonna have one of. And then we could have all different. And so in that case, if they were all different, in this case, that's uh, three choose three, which is just one. So adding those up, we have three plus six plus one, 10 options. All right, so the trouble is now at a typical sushi restaurant, there may be 20 options and hopefully you have more than $3, maybe you have $10. And there's just no way we can write out um, all, all the different options. So we need to figure out a more systematic way of doing it. And so let me sort of describe some a different way of telling your order for sushi uh, that you can imagine being kind of a, um, this is a way that in New York, when every time I went and ordered a sub, I this is the way that I would, would order a sub, is somebody would tell you all the options that you'd have and you'd just say, yes, 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 no, no, no. Um, and we would very quickly go through um, all the many, many options of what you could or could not add to your to your sub. So let's let's go back, um, let's go back to um these different ways. Here, this order was three cucumber. Oh, that didn't work to erase that. Let's go back to this, um, these three ways of ordering sushi. One was ordering three cucumbers. One was ordering one cucumber and two salmon. And one was ordering one cucumber, one yam, and one salmon. So here's, here's how you could do it again. Imagine that you're at some buffet and somebody's handing you the sushi and all you get to say is yes or no. So they start with cucumber. So person one, so let's say this is person, person one up here. Person one goes to the sushi line and they say cucumber. Yes, cucumber, yes, cucumber, yes, cucumber, no. Yam, no, salmon, well, you've already run out of dollars by that point. Person two goes up and they say cucumber. Yes, cucumber, no, yam, no, salmon, yes, salmon, yes. And person three goes up to the counter and they say cucumber, yes, cucumber, no, yam, yes, yam, no, salmon. So that way of saying yes or no completely describes what order you want to make at a restaurant. And so let's think about let's think about the nose and what role they're playing in this problem. So you have to say no every time you want to move from one kind of sushi to another. So these bars, we'll call them sticks, they represent saying no more. And the green dots we'll call them stones, they represent saying yes. And so if you have three types of sushi, you can describe that by, you need to say yes three times. That was the value of K. And how many times do you need to say no well, there were three kinds of uh, sushi, and, and so we had to say no twice. So we had to say no two times, and it turns out that this is the number of kinds of sushi minus one, because we don't need to say no at the very end. We already know that we're out of types at that point. So we need to say yes, k equals three times, no, n minus one equals two times, and so altogether, you need to say five things. So we have to say five things. And of them, 
including two no's and three yeses. And so the location of where you put your nose means that out of this sequence of five things, so this is a sequence, five things, and we have to choose, so this is a sequence of length five, and we have to choose two nose. And so the number of ways of doing that is five choose two, which happens to be five times four over two, which is 10. Which is exactly the answer we got right there. Okay, so let's do a harder problem. Let's now say that we have n equals eight types of sushi. And we have k equals $10. And now we want to make, uh, you can imagine the types of sushi. We start with cucumber, then we have yam, then we have salmon, then we have eel. It goes on for some, um, four more types. And if we want to make our order, maybe I should put in more types. Um, what other kinds of sushi are there? There's, there's tamago for egg, and there's um, tuna, and there's avocado, and there's, um, I can't believe I'm, I'm crashing on the eighth kind of sushi. Let's see, um, let's say yellowtail. Another kind of tuna. Okay, so um, so we have these eight types of sushi. We have ten dollars, and so a possible order could be something like two cucumbers, one yam, uh, three eels, um, one egg. Have we used seven? And so two avocados and one yellowtail. Wait, one, two, three. Four, Six, seven. Okay, so this is a possible order, and and we can think about our sequence, our order is being yes, yes. Then we have um, this. Well, I'll just I'll just write it like this. Okay, so these are the no's, these red bars. Oh, we don't need that one. So these are the. These are the no's are the red and the greens are the yeses. And so um, what you can imagine is that out of our 10 yeses, we are then interspersing no's. There's a no after the first two cucumbers, a no after the yam. There's another no there because it was no for the after the yam and then no salmons at all, and then three eels and then a no, and then one tamago and then a no. Um, there's another no in there also, and then two yams and then a no. Okay, and so we have all together three, uh, we have 10 green dots and we have seven, seven no's and we have we have 10 yeses. So this is an example of a possible sushi order. And in general, we're going to say no seven times and yes 10 times. So we have a sequence of length, of length 17 with seven no's. And so the number of ways to choose that is 17 choose 7, which you could work out what that equals. All right, and so in general, if you have n types of objects, which in this case 
for the types of sushi. And you have, you want to choose K with repeats allowed. Then what we need to do is to, the, the answer is that the number of ways is going to be N plus K minus one, choose K, which turns out to be the same as N plus K minus one, choose N minus one. All right, and let's just think about, uh, so this is what the theorem in this book, in this section says. And so the idea is that we're making a multi-set, we're making a multi-set of n types of objects. We're gonna have the multi-set have k things in it and repeats are allowed. So for example, here, our multi-set is two cucumbers, one yam, three eels, one tamago, two avocado, and one yellowtail. And in order to do that, we're gonna order the n types of objects and we're gonna think about making a sequence of length n plus k minus one. And that st stands for the, the number of, of, the number of yeses is k, the number of noes is n minus one. So k is the number of dots, and n minus one is the number of um, sticks. And then we have to choose the, the k yeses or equivalently, we choose the location for the k yeses. Equivalently, we could choose the location for the n minus one um, no's. Okay, so this theorem, this is a really powerful theorem. It's our, uh, we'll see later on in chapter five that it's our first example of making a bijection between two types of objects, where one type of object is the multi-set, multi-set, cucumber, cucumber, um, yam, eel, 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 tomago, avocado, yellowtail. This is the multi-set. And the sequence, uh, in this case, the sequence was this sequence of, of, of yeses and noes. And for each multi-set, you have a sequence, and for each sequence, you have a multi-set. So we'll talk about how that is a bijection. And then here we can then figure out the number of ways of making that multi-set by counting the number of sequences, just by counting the locations of where we change from one type of object to the other. So this kind of problem is also very good for, um, for if you want to distribute pennies to kids, then your n types of objects are the kids, and the k is the number of pennies you have, and you're giving pennies to the kids in the same way that you would uh, give dollars to types of sushi. And also in the book, there are problems where maybe you want each kid to get one penny at least. And so in the book, there's a formula for, for how to do that. And maybe I should write that, write down that formula too. So let's say you have, let's say you, you want to distribute M pennies to n kids, where each kid gets at least one. Well, the way of thinking about this is that you start by giving each kid at least one. So then you have m minus n pennies left to distribute.
And so this is your new value of k, the number of pennies you have less, left to distribute. And so the number of ways to do this is, so we have k pennies, and you have n kids, which are your object. And so we the number of ways to do that is n plus k minus 1, choose k. But now this simplifies a bit because k is m minus n. So you have m plus n minus n minus 1, choose k. And k is just m minus n. And then these n's cancel. And so you're left with m minus 1, choose m minus n. So this is how you handle problems where you want to distribute objects to kids and where there's some constraints on giving one object to, to at least one object to each kid. Okay, so this is actually one of my favorite types of problems. You can do some really fun problems with this and the quiz will have some of those. And next time we'll come back and start talking more about these binomial coefficients and all the cool formulas involving those.